I am eating Chef Boyardee for one week. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Peebs channel. We've got another one week eating video for you today. The classic pasta in a can company, Chef Boyardee. Also known as Chef Boyardee. Yes, the Mr. Chef Boy. Chef Boyardee is obviously iconic and well known for its ravioli, but they actually have a lot of other different types of pasta, including some uh, kinds of pasta that aren't like tomato sauce based. I try to get as much variety as possible, but to change it up even more for the last two, possibly three days. We're going to be doing some actual Chef Boyardee cooking. I'm going to be cooking Chef Boyardee recipes from their official website. They don't look very good. I honestly, we'll get there when we come to it. But I don't think that they're going to be good and I picked the two worst ones just for fun. But we will start with something more basic. I couldn't decide which one to try because there's a lot of different flavors and we only have seven days to fit them in. So for day one, I figured we'd do three flavors, three of the more basic, like Italian pasta sauce, red sauce flavors. We have obviously the Chef Boy RD beef ravioli. And I did get these in the smaller little microwave little containers. Second, we have my childhood favorite flavor, beefaroni, which is, uh, I don't know, just little noodles in red meat sauce. And we have another one that I admittedly still kind of like to this day, last time I had it anyway, the spaghetti and meatballs. So we will do a little comparison of these three three flavors, see which ones we like best. Of course, I will be ranking all of them, uh, which the final ranking will be on the seventh day, but for this one day, we will see which of these three classic iconic Chef Boyardee flavors will be king. Let's go head on over to the microwave. Move metal lid, under plastic cover, replace plastic cover. High for 45 seconds, that's it? We're doing a minute, screw that. I dropped this one on the ground in the store, so that's why the lid's broken. While I'm waiting for this to heat up, a comment popped up on my uh, phone from YouTube. This is a live reaction to, the, to a YouTube comment. It says... Man, I'm actually super hungry. So uh, I don't know if this is gonna be good or not, but I'm still excited to eat it. Do you eat Chef Boy or do with a fork or a spoon? I don't really know. I got both. I mean, if it was actual spaghetti or, or ravioli, I mean, you obviously you'd use a fork, but this isn't that. So I feel like the spoon might actually be better. Let me know in the comments about your fork or spoon preferences. All right, we will start with the classic and the one I don't really remember liking that much, the ravioli. This is the one that everybody supposedly loves. This is the one that put Chef Boy RD on the map. It's also, in my opinion the worst so maybe my opinion has changed it's been a quite a while since I've had it let's give it a closer look <laughs> yummy <laughs> uh there's theoretically some ravioli pieces in here there we go there they are okay that looks a little better see what I remember from these raviolis is that they're just so soft I mean all of these are gonna be soft but I, like the noodles are clearly not gonna be they're gonna be very overcooked but something about the texture of these I remember not liking that much let's try it Eh. Here's a we got we got a double double decker ravioli yet It still has the texture of room temperature butter when you bite into it. It's not just the noodles It's the actual beef inside of it. It's just so soft and that's really all you taste is that beef and it's not vomit worthy or anything It's not disgusting. It's just pretty unsatisfying very soggy wet beef and the sauce for some reason I swear it doesn't taste as good as the other ones. I'm sure it's exactly the same I still think it's not as good whatever. I'm hungry. Also. There's not a lot of extra beef pieces in the sauce I feel like with the beefaroni and, and stuff. There's more beef in it just kind of wet liquidy sauce that doesn't have a strong flavor. Next, let's try the beefaroni. I'm a little more excited about this one. Again, loved this one as a kid. Haven't had it super recently to my recollection. I do have a story about beefaroni uh, though before we start, specifically this type of beefaroni in this little microwavable uh, container. When I was a teenager, I was still kind of obsessed with uh, canned pasta. I grew up eating a bunch of SpaghettiOs. Even to this day, it's kind of a comfort food for me. Don't eat it often, but you know, every now and then you gotta go back. But even more so than SpaghettiOs, these canned cans of beefaroni were my go-to. I ate these all the time. I remember staying up late watching Adult Swim one night with these beefaronis. It was a little bit dark in the room where I was watching it, so I didn't really know what I was eating, and I bit into something that seemed a little strange, and I thought, you know, whatever. All right, let's just go into the kitchen in the light and see what this is. The thing I bit into is really tough, like a tough, bad piece of meat or something. I rinsed the sauce off of it, and I don't know how to describe this, but it looked like part of a heart. Like part of a, of a human and 
indoor animal, probably, hopefully, heart. Had like veins and like holes in it. I, I don't know how to describe it. it. It looked like a piece of a heart. And it, it grossed me out even more than it sounds. It was genuinely one of the most disgusting things I ever saw in my life. And I had it out of my mouth. I bit into it. Yeah, but anyway, let's let's have this beef runny. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to. Let, let's just eat the beef runny though anyway. Also looks a little bit sad. But once you stir it up. Yeah, see, there we go. See, it just feels a little more thick and substantial than the uh, ravioli, which is so watery by comparison. Don't see any human and or animal heart pieces though. So I think we're in the clear. We got the non-heart batch this time. Chef Boy already really hooking us up with the it, S quality uh, cans today for this video. Beefaroni going down. Yeah, the taste is just so much different. I don't really know how to describe it. I highly doubt that they use different sauces, but it tastes like they do. This is a thicker sauce for sure. More meaty and flavorful. It clears the ravioli. It still clears it. Now that's nostalgic right there. It's weird because this one obviously has less beef. I mean, the beef ravioli has a beef stuffed into it and even a little bit of beef in the sauce. This still tastes beefier than the ravioli, though. Because the beef inside of the ravioli doesn't really taste like anything. The noodles are obviously insanely overcooked. I mean, they're not going to be any other way. They're just as overcooked as the ravioli, but I think the shape of these, like, makes the texture a little bit better. I'm talking, like, 10% better, but that goes a long way on this, I think. All right, last but hopefully not least, we have the spaghetti and meatballs. I can see how this one would be off-putting to people. The all of it's fairly off-putting, but this one in particular, I mean, look at that. that. Even this one in particular looks a little... <laughs> Even more sus than the other ones. You to get a little bit of a stir there. And uh, these meatballs, you know this is like 20% real meat tops. Hey, but I always liked it. Gotta do the twist noodle technique. <laughs> I don't think that really did anything. <laughs> Mmm, al dente. Unfortunately, it's gotten a little bit room temperature, which uh, doesn't do it any justice, I don't think. Not doing it any favors. You want this fake ass pasta to at least be hot. But taking that into consideration, I still think I like it better than the ravioli. Let's try the, the meatball. There's only two in here, I think, which, I mean, they're kind of big, I guess. You know, honestly, it's not that bad. The meatball tastes kind of good. I'm not, I am not gonna lie. I mean, if you served me this meatball at an actual sit down restaurant, uh, we would have some problems. But uh, for a can of spaghetti, it doesn't feel so smushy like you, like I was kind of expecting it to. A little bit of the consistency of like the food I feed my dogs from a can, but you know, this is for kids. Kids will eat anything. <laughs> Chef Boyardee, kids will eat anything. All right, so between these three, the ravioli is definitely on the bottom. That's not that surprising to me. I think I'm actually gonna put the spaghetti and meatballs over the beefaroni. You can kind of tell my ranking by uh, how much of each of them I, I ate. I am probably gonna finish these off after I finish recording because I don't want it to go to waste, but I clearly wasn't that into the ravioli. Might not be high quality Italian food, but it'll fill your belly. You could do worse. I mean, you probably couldn't do worse Italian food, but you could do worse other... It's, you know. you know what? You really couldn't do worse. What am I talking about? But my standards are low. See you on day two. We'll eat something that isn't red sauce. When the cheese starts rolling, crack it, your noodle go. Welcome to day two of Chef Boy. I apologize I didn't have time to shave today. I was too busy playing uh, Hannah Montana the movie for the Wii. You know how it is. Yesterday we had a lot of red meat sauce and that is a lot of what Chef Boyardee has to offer. But again, as I mentioned yesterday, that's not the only thing he has on his menu. He also has mac and cheese. The Chef Boyardee mac and cheese. Pasta and cheese flavored sauce. How can you say it has no artificial flavors, but also call it cheese? cheese flavored sauce. That makes it sound like it's artificial. I don't mean to question your integrity, Mr. Chef. Yesterday, I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty underwhelming. Even the spaghetti and the beef runny, which I liked a lot more than the ravioli. It left me feeling empty inside. I was full in my belly, but my spirit was empty. I'm hoping that this canned macaroni and cheese product can help to fill that void. Although I do kind of doubt it. I actually have no idea what this is gonna taste like. I'm trying to decide what the ceiling is for this. It's probably not as good as something like Panera, bread, mac, and cheese. People knock on Panera Bread. It has some good stuff. And it's mac and cheese is pretty good. There's no way it's gonna be that good. I don't even know if this restaurant still exists, but there used to be a restaurant called Boston Market. I think they at least still have frozen food. They had a mac and cheese. It was like really twisty noodles with very thick, heavy, dark yellow cheese sauce. Very fake cheese sauce. I definitely remember liking that stuff. I'm not hating on it, but it wasn't like the best tier mac and cheese. I think that is the absolute ceiling of as good as Chef YRD mac and cheese can be. It's probably Probably not going to reach that. The floor is probably, well, let, let's be real. The floor is probably Chef Boyardee mac and cheese. That's, pro <laughs> that's probably the, the bottom floor. I guess maybe as good as like KFC mac and cheese. I'll f with KFC mac and cheese. But it's probably the worst mac and cheese I can think of. This will probably be worse than that. Let's be real. Yeah, it kind of smells like uh, KFC. Come on. 
Get out! I'm actually kind of surprised that much fell out. Yeah, it's, it's stuck in there tight. Close up on the cold mac and cheese. Really close up on the cold mac and cheese. Azura has come as a can. There you go. Bye. Let's see what we're working with here. It looks the same. All right, I've got the mac and cheese. It is nice and warm, and I think I was kind of spot on with my KFC comparison. It does kind of smell exactly like that. The consistency of the cheese sauce seems pretty good, not too runny. I'm kind of convincing myself that this could be good right now. And again, the smell is kind of like spot on KFC, so I'm hoping that I was on point with that. It will be like maybe just as good as the KFC mac and cheese. Let's go. It's a little hot. Can you see that? Yeah, there's some steam. Well, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's like somehow way worse. It has like right off the bat, it kind of has a little bit of a cheesy flavor, but that cheesy flavor goes away almost instantly and then it just kind of tastes like nothing. And obviously the noodles are way too soft. That's really not surprising. I'm pretty sure this has a lot of sodium in it. Uh, Azura took my can, so I don't have it. You'd think it would taste salty. Th this needs salt. I didn't bring salt because I refused to put salt on something with this much sodium already. I did bring some uh, ground pepper though. I kind of like ground pepper on my my mac and cheese. Maybe this will uh, kick it up a notch. Bam! <laughs> there, there. This is gonna be so peppery now. Holy sh Maybe it'll, it'll at least taste like pepper now. That little runny bit at the bottom is, is uh, bothering me. Let's just get rid of that. It's so flavorless, I barely even taste the pepper. I put like a pound of pepper in this. Whatever. You know, if you just lower your expectations even further than you would have thought you needed to, it's still not good, but passable, I guess. I have an idea. It doesn't taste cheesy. We'll just put real cheese on it. There we go. That's a pretty generous amount of cheese. This is sharp cheddar, by the way, if anyone's wondering. If anyone is going to recreate this at home, which I kind of don't recommend doing, but... You know. I mean, no, you guys all have to do this too. You have to eat the same thing I'm eating. You pause this every day and then eat the same thing I'm eating while I'm eating it. That's how this video was intended to be enjoyed. Let's see, how does this? I'm gonna stir it in. I shredded it thin so it should mix in pretty nicely. All right. It's at least 25% better. <laughs> Not too bad. This is approaching a mildly acceptable meal at this point. Obviously, for ranking purposes, I'm just going to count it pre the pepper and cheese added in. But if for some reason you can only eat Kraft, I mean, Chef Boyard, not even Kraft, <laughs> Chef Boyard D-Mac and cheese, then maybe that'll help you out a little bit. All right. Forgettable at best, astonishingly disappointing at worst. Best thing I can say is it wasn't gross. I mean, it didn't taste like anything, so it wasn't gross. See you tomorrow. She has to be squeezed immediately before she explodes. Explodes! Hey everybody, I have a confession to make. Uh, welcome to day three. Except it's not day three. I didn't record my ravioli yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday I had some kind of like food poisoning or something. I don't know. I don't know what was wrong. I felt super sick all day long. I couldn't uh, get myself to film, unfortunately, much less uh, eat Chef Boyardee. I don't think it was the mac and cheese. I hope it wasn't the Chef Boyardee because I'm, I'm, I, you know, I got, I got a lot more Chef Boyardee to eat. So hopefully you will forgive me for my one day that I missed. And let's just pretend from here on out that this is a week straight. Today I have the lowest rated item on the entire Chef Boyardee website, their official website. A lot of their items have low star reviews on their own website. I'm surprised they even allow this. But this one had, I believe, 1.9 out of 5 stars. And it's not like it was just a few reviews. It was like a couple hundred reviews, I think. The Chef Boyardee overstuffed beef ravioli. If I'm being completely honest, I have a hard time imagining how this is that much worse than their regular ravioli, which is already really bad anyways. But apparently it is. But since it's apparently so bad, I did buy some Parmesan cheese to go with it. And I got the fanciest Parmesan cheese that I could find at the grocery store. Only the best for my Chef Boyardee ravioli meal. So we'll try it without and then you know, we'll add the fancy uh, Parmesan cheese and see how it goes. And since we're going fancy, I'm not even gonna use the microwave today. I'm I'm gonna use the stove top. I know it's a little crazy, but I'll do it for you guys. Anything for you guys here on the Peeps channel. Let's get on over to the kitchen to prepare our high quality Italian cuisine. Okay, how do you do this? Are you supposed to make this with like olive oil or something? Or do you just pour pasta into a saucepan? That's it. Oh my God. I'm gonna use a little olive oil. We're, we're, we're going fancy today. Completely unnecessary, but I don't know. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm a real chef boy RD. If you really want to go fancy, you use Pam. But I don't think I have any. Look who is uh, caught on to me doing another one week food video who is waiting for the can again. <laughs> Hold on, Doobie. Nice and watery, just like you want it. That's, you want that? That's what you want? You want that? There we go. 
perfect. <laughs> These are good cooking sounds, right? Here you go, Zuby. Here's your 1.9 out of five star candy. How's it taste? She seems to like it. This one got uh, messed up. Pour some extra sauce on there. Put the noodle back on the top. Good as new. Sauce test. Mmm. <sighs> Tastes like thick water. That's what you want. All right, I think it's done. I was trying to thicken up the sauce a little bit, but I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. Plop it in there as careful as possible. They're all breaking already. All right, I got my meal here. I forgot my cheese. My cheese. Cheese. This cheese costs like 10 times the price of one of these Chef Boyardee cans. We'll worry about the cheese later though. First, we gotta try it raw. I mean, it's cooked. We gotta try it, try it naked, untouched. And I'm actually starving, so I hope it's good. I'm eating it either way. Let me find one that is like not broken. Are there any that aren't broken? Here we go. I found at least one solid ravioli piece that is not broken yet. You can see it's starting to break apart. 1.9 out of five beef overstuffed ravioli down the hatch. Actually, actually it's a little hot. This is bowl is hot too. Burning myself. I'll do anything for views. I'll burn myself. I don't care. Please like the video. I got injured. Subscribe for my new series. I burn myself every day for one week. I've actually gotten worse uh, suggestions in the, in the comments. <laughs> Huh, it's not that bad. 1.9, this is this is way better than the regular ravioli. Am I crazy? Like I thought that this would be worse because the bad thing about the ravioli is that this meat inside is like almost flavorless and it's too soft and the texture is not great. So I thought just like adding more of it would make it even worse. But I don't know, this this tastes way better. I'm not really sure where these negative reviews on chefwayrd.com are coming from. What, who are these overstuffed beef ravioli haters? Maybe it just tastes better because it came from the can instead of that little like micro microwavable thing. Or maybe just cooking it on the stovetop is way better. At first I was doing it in the microwave because I figured that's probably like 90% of the people making chip wire are probably using the microwave. So I kind of wanted the true to life experience. But maybe from now on, I'll be doing the stovetop. Although here before too long, in fact, I think the day after tomorrow, we're going to be cooking recipes. So we're almost done with just straight up eating the can. Just going to get crazy. Speaking of getting crazy, let's put this fancy Parmesan on this. This is really going to amp it up. Wait, hold on. This is best if used by March 21st, 2020. For? It's past that. And it's looking kind of grody and, and like wet on the top. Dude, I just had, I was just sick all day yesterday. I don't want to eat. Oh God, it's probably fine. All right, whatever. I'm just going to eat it anyway. It'll be fine. I swear for a long time, I've always felt like I get too upset and like anxious about eating food that's like past the use by date. And recently I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop doing that. I'm going to, I'm going to be better. I'm just going to be like, if it smells fine, it's fine. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to, I'm like going to be less anal about that. Yesterday I got sick from eating something. In a few days, ago, I ate some cream cheese on toast and I thought it was a little old. It's probably fine. And I ate it anyway. And then later that day, I was like, man, that was so good. I want to have some more. I opened it up and realized that there was mold on the top of the lid. So I ate moldy cream cheese. No, I think I'm just going to go back. I'm just going to go back to being anal. Going back to anal. I do think this will be fine though. It's only like a couple days and you know, it's just like dry Parmesan cheese. Mmm, fancy. I think it's better. You know, this isn't the first time I've gotten like slightly fancier Parmesan cheese. I don't know. I think I'm just gonna go back to using the fake powder because this, this is, that stuff tastes better anyway. This is like just hard strings of cheese. It doesn't melt that well. I'm going back to the powder. Craft, you got me back. I'm, I'm hooked again. Probably doesn't help that I'm eating it on Jet Boyardee though. Maybe if it was fancier pasta, it would taste better. I gotta say though, this really isn't that bad. I don't care what the Chef Boyardee fans say. It's better than the regular ravioli. All right, tomorrow we have one that I'm really not looking forward to. Uh, I'll see you there. Ravioli, ravioli, give me the formuoli. Welcome to day four of Chef Boy. Before we move on, I'd like to address the allegations. The allegations that I'm sure many of you left in the comments, I just want to say, it's not true, it's fake. I did not wear the same shirt two days in a row. I did not do that. I wore the, I mean, I did, but I also did it because I wore the shirt in the first day because I wore that Zelda shirt and then I got sick, sick that next day. But I, my wife did the laundry, so I did, I had the clean shirt and since I hadn't done the video the day before at that I th forgot that I had worn this shirt on day two so on day three which was actually the fourth day because like I got sick I wore that same shirt but I didn't wear the same shirt I'm glad we got that out of the way we have passed the hump day of this video series day four is always nice because it's like getting past the hump we're getting past the getting getting moving towards the end a little bit and I'm kind of happy for that if I'm being honest because uh, I'm getting kind of sick of eating chef boy RD which is pretty unfortunate you know actually since we haven't passed the hump now that I think about it because I mean there's still 
four more days for me because I'm just starting this. So actually, I take back all the optimism that I just had. For day four, believe it or not, we're going to be eating Chef Boyardee. I know you're surprised about that. But it's one that I've never had before. In fact, it was one I had to special order. Chef Boyardee cheese ravioli in tomato sauce. So I'm assuming this one is, I mean, again, big assumption. I'm assuming this is vegetarian. Uh, it's not in tomato beef sauce. It doesn't look like there is any beef on the sauce can there. This was the note that I left myself when I realized that I had the same shirt on. Remember to tell everybody, I'm not that disgusting. Yeah, there's clearly no meat in the sauce. It doesn't specify meat. That's a lot of ingredients. I'm just going to assume none of that is meat. I'm not seeing a lot of cheese in this. So I don't really know what kind of cheese. Less than 2% of cheddar cheese. It doesn't seem like there's very much cheese in these ingredients. I've never been a big fan of cheese inside of ravioli. They usually use, correct me if I'm wrong, ricotta cheese. I think that's what it is. I don't like ricotta cheese. I, it doesn't really look like there is any ricotta cheese in this. Again, it doesn't look like there's any cheese in this, basically. So who knows what kind of cheese this is that we're gonna get. Just gotta get through this, and then tomorrow we'll start the cooking the recipes. That, that'll, that'll definitely be interesting. I don't think any of them will be good, but it'll be interesting. Let's go to the kitchen. We gotta do this in the uh, on the stovetop again. That, I think I've set that precedent now. Seems a little thicker than the uh, meat sauce. Maybe this'll be good. I mean, it doesn't smell good or look good, but it could be good. Bad chef boy, bad. Azura is once again Wanting waiting this. for the can. <laughs> is this what you want? This? This? Okay, take it. Be assertive, you can take it. Yeah, take it. There you go. Take it. <laughs> Bye. She's living her best life. I, on the other hand, am eating cheese ravioli from Chef Boyardee. All right, I have my prepared canned tomato product meal. Again, it does look like the sauce is thicker. Definitely no meat in it. One positive, I guess, is that unlike the overstuffed beef one, it seems like the raviolis have largely stayed glued in place, possibly by the cheese. The negative side, I don't think it's gonna taste that good. It's only really one negative, though, when you think about it. But hey, you never know. Let's see if we can get a peek inside to see what the cheese looks like. Looks uh, pretty good. I imagine it's kind of a mozzarella cheese kind of taste. Before I eat this, have any of you ever had this before? I have definitely never seen this at the store. I had to special order this one. I had to special order another one that was gonna do tomorrow. I don't even think it's gonna come in time, so I'll have to move it to like day six, I guess. But yeah, Chef Boyardee has a lot of different random things. They have like a butter noodles. I couldn't even find that online anywhere. Even on eBay, nobody was selling that. It's on their website though. Like, who's, who's selling this? Apparently, it exists somewhere in the world, but I guess some of these more obscure ones don't sell well enough to be like a uh, readily available at your local grocery store very often. Anyway, here we go. Enough stalling. Trying to get like a little more of just the cheese. Again, I'm a little bit skeptical of the cheese. I mean, when I looked at the ingredients, I can't figure out how much cheese is even in this, but I can't lie. It doesn't taste that bad. I feel like with this one and the last one, I had kind of set a really low bar. It made it easier for them to pass it, I guess. Yeah, this is not bad at all. This could be a good option if uh, you're vegetarian. Don't take my word for it. I don't, I don't actually know if it's vegetarian or not. Or if maybe you're just grossed out by canned meat, which frankly, I can't blame you. Assuming you can actually find this and you're craving ravioli in uh, under two minutes, you could do worse. I gotta say, it doesn't look very appealing visually though. Uh, maybe I'm stirring too aggressively when I'm cooking it in the pot. That could be why. Like, look at this. This is uh yeah. And I don't know, am I crazy? But the noodles themselves almost seem to be a little bit more, well, a little bit more less insanely overcooked. That could just be my imagination though. The cheese is not very flavorful, but it doesn't taste like ricotta cheese, which I've always really disliked. The texture of ricotta cheese is gross to me as well. This is more of, again, like a mozzarella kind of texture. Not that bad. Honestly, that's probably gonna go pretty high on my ranking, which I was not expecting. I'll see you guys tomorrow for a disgusting ravioli recipe. Peter, Bojita is here. Welcome to day five of Chef Boyardee. Why Chef Boyardee? You know, I'm starting to ask myself that exact same question. Whose idea was this? The bad news, yes, we still have to eat more Chef Boyardee. The good news is we are done with the basic stuff. We are moving on. <coughs> Chef Boyardee from yesterday is coming, in, coming back up. <coughs> we are done with the basic stuff. We are moving on to the specialty recipes. These are recipes that presumably Mr. Chef Boy himself came up with, so they have to be good. Okay, so we don't really need that many things for this recipe. We need some mozzarella cheese. It said a plum tomato. I don't really know what that is. I got a Roma tomato. It's probably about the same thing. We're supposed to have garlic powder. I thought I had garlic powder, but I don't. We do have some fresh garlic cloves, so I'm just gonna chop that up instead. And of course, we can't forget. Wait, no. 
I forgot something else. Where's the pita bread I bought? Where is that? Here it is, pita pockets. I assume these are, oh yeah, okay, they're pita pockets. I actually had a hard time finding pita pockets at the store for some reason. And of course we cannot forget the ravioli. The most important thing for our pita pockets. All right, so I gotta do some ingredient prep real quick. Beautiful. Yummy. Can for dog. Do you like that? Yeah. She's the biggest Chef Boyardee fan in the house. <laughs> Finely minced garlic. Done by a professional chef. Bam! 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 Mix it up. I don't think I've ever put freshly ground garlic into the microwave before, but hey, this is the first time for everything. This is the wrong ravioli. This is supposed to be the regular, but I use the minis. Whatever, we'll make it work. All right, put this in the microwave for two to three minutes. While that's heating up, we'll cut the pita bread in half. Mix the tomatoes in. And now we just gotta fill them into the pitas and put them into the uh, oven, which I've already preheated to broil for like two to three minutes. Oh yeah, can't forget the cheese. These things are not gonna hold together, holy shit. These things are already leaking through. <laughs> oh my God. I think they're pretty much done. Oh my God, I could not pick these up without them breaking. Hold it together. Dude, these are so busted. I'm just gonna take this whole like hot pan up there into the desk. I'll put something under it. Cause these are not gonna come off of this without falling apart, no way. Here these uh, monstrosities are once again. They might be more, slightly more solidified. No, yeah, these are not gonna come off. They're like so wet. Going to try to get these off. This one looks the most sturdy kind of all right i'm just gonna go for it there we go there it, there it is some of it fell out but uh god <laughs> it's so so sort of holding together uh cheers it's um <laughs> it's okay i think i got sauce on my beard um it's uh, it's very soggy, as, as you know, you might expect if you're putting liquid pasta sauce inside of a thin pita pocket. Yeah, this is what's going to happen. Well, the positives, the fresh garlic and the tomatoes actually kind of makes it taste a lot better. The mozzarella cheese on top is a nice touch too. This is the part of the video where I'm realizing I didn't bring the napkin. The negatives, this, all of this, yeah, all, all of this. I'm trying to decide like whose idea was this? You could just make this with the garlic powder or fresh garlic, chop up some tomatoes, put a little extra cheese in it and then like serve a side of pita pocket or bread or something. I don't know what the purpose of putting it inside of the pita pocket is, but it was just obviously a terrible idea. I don't know why I had any amount of faith at all that it would work. It doesn't. If you try something this crazy, this is what will happen. It's like a murder scene. So yeah, that is uh f***ing terrible. See you tomorrow. I warn you, I throw once again again. Welcome to day six of Chef Boy RD. Today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We have the final recipe for tomorrow. But for today we had one of the two that I had to special order. It was delayed and delayed and delayed. I finally got it. We have the spaghetti sauce with meat. This is similar to the pizza video that we did. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm not doing the Chef Boyardee pizza on this uh, one week video, it's because we did an entire video on the Chef Boyardee pizza a year or two ago. So you can check that out after if you want. But that was just a can that came with like sauce and meat or maybe it had dough in it. I can't remember. This is just the spaghetti sauce with the meat. It shows noodles on here, but I'm 99% sure it doesn't have noodles in it. I will be making my own noodles here. I just picked out some barilla, or I, I don't know how you pronounce that. Barilla. And I didn't like that stinky, wet, old Parmesan, so I got some uh, Kraft 
grated Parmesan, the fanciest kind that I could find. And I am going to try to make the fanciest kind of spaghetti I can make out of this Chef Boyardee sauce with meat. I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually really excited to eat this, and I think it could be good. Not only does it have really high reviews on their website, it also kind of makes sense. I mean, the worst part about Chef Boyardee is how soft and squishy the noodles are. So you take out the noodles and add your own. We're gonna make them al dente. Only the best for my Chef Boyardee spaghetti. It's gotta be good then. It's gotta be good. It's gonna be a classic. I might even chop up some, uh, mince some, go some garlic to go in also. Last night I had to get up to change my baby's diaper and I was really hungry just sitting there thinking, what am I gonna eat tomorrow? I thought about the Chef Boyardee spaghetti sauce and I literally, I'm not even making this up. I got the biggest smile on my face. I'm totally gassing this up in my mind that this is going to be good. I'm really setting myself up for some potential disappointment here. But when I was a kid, the favorite meal my mom would make for us was just spaghetti and it was like prego, just basic prego spaghetti sauce with meat. I love that. It's still one of my favorite comfort foods to this day. I really like fancy, nice pastas. Well, you know, I, I've had pasta from a real Italian and obviously that's better. But something about that comfort prego pasta, it just really hits the spot. I also ate a lot of canned pasta like Chef Boyardee and SpaghettiOs. So kind of combining both of those in my head, it's like going to be the ultimate comfort and nostalgia food. Let's go cook it up. I don't think I can contain my excitement any longer. In before, it's absolutely terrible. Boil some water. Got to put in some salt. I don't know. Is that, is that enough? Is that too much? I have no idea. Like I said, I'm going to try to make this the fanciest Chef Boyardee pasta I can possibly make. So uh, I'm going to be using olive oil. Got to get some garlic. I'm going to simmer the sauce. Simmer it. I like it when it gets all nice and thick. Pasta's gonna be al dente. I don't even really know what makes pasta al dente, but it's going to be that, so get excited. Probably too much, whatever. I'm just, it's not like I'm cooking raw meat or anything. I don't know. I just, you know, you cook something, you put olive oil in it. It's fancy! Beer bag, I gotta get the sauce. <laughs> Epic chopping action. Is he a real chef? Holy <laughs> shit. I don't see a lot of meat in this. I'm not, not gonna lie. I back, I don't really see any. Is that a piece of meat, maybe? I found some oregano. That seems like something you'd put in pasta sauce, right? I don't know. Fancy! All right, I think the noodles are just about done. Let's give them a try. Al dente, baby. Al dente all day. Mwah. Only barely burned myself. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's fancy. Got the sauce simmering here. Probably done. I'll leave it, let it simmer for another minute. Mwah. Spaghetti is served. Parmesan. Oh, Tell me when. Oh, wait, hold on, I gotta take the plastic off. All right, tell me when. Come on. There, the fanciest uh, pasta from the pasta restaurant. Oh wait, you need a drink, hold on. I only drank some of this, it's, it's you can have the rest. Dinner shirt. All right, I'm excited. <laughs> I don't know if beer is like a good drink for pasta, it's, it's kind of a lot of carbs, but I don't have any wine. Going in for that first taste. That's a good pasta. I actually didn't even get that much sauce. Let me try it again. Delicious. Okay, I'm not gonna say that that is like good. I would serve it to like visitors. I wouldn't, <laughs> probably, depending on who it was, I guess. But for me, this is actually pretty good. The noodles are almost a little too thin. It's weird that the worst part about it is the noodles. I think I just didn't cook them long enough, I guess. Like maybe I would have preferred some uh, slightly thicker uh, spaghetti noodles, but it tastes pretty good. That being said, there's almost no meat at all. There's tiny little bits of meat. So if you were gonna try this, assuming you can even find anywhere to buy it, you might wanna get a little, uh, 
uh, ground beef and cook it up to go with it. I can't in good conscience say it's better than Prego. And I mean, that's probably not even a very high bar to be meeting because uh, I don't know. Do other people like Prego? I personally love Prego. Ragu, go to hell. It's definitely better than Ragu. But you know, honestly, it doesn't really taste amazing. It's more just like I love this kind of shit spaghetti meal, so it's doing it for me. I kind of want to taste the sauce, like, by itself. You know what? I'm going to go back into the kitchen and taste, like, a spoonful of it. Yeah, it basically just tastes like beefaroni without the noodles, which is probably literally what it is. I don't even know if I could recommend this if you had, like, a family and you wanted to make some easy spaghetti, because if you want to make easy spaghetti, you might as well just buy Prego or something like that. It's probably about the same price, and also, you can barely even find this anywhere. But, hey, I like it. I think I'm actually going to go get seconds of this. I'll see you guys on tomorrow, the final day, which I promise you is not going going to be good. I mean, I, I don't see how it possibly could be anyway. Stu, what are you doing? Making chocolate pudding. It's four o'clock in the morning. Why on earth are you making chocolate pudding? I'm eating Chef Boyardee at 3 a.m. because I've lost control of my life. Hello, everyone. Welcome to day seven. This is 3.30 a.m. as in a very, very late dinner, not a very early breakfast. Still doing the whole new dad thing, and sometimes you just gotta sleep at 9 p.m. for four hours. Whenever you get a chance, you just drop down and go to sleep. But it's alright because I have something very delicious and nutritious to feed me for this early morning, late night filming session. Chef Boy RD, specifically the Hawaiian ravioli skillet. This is some kind of like sweet and sour chicken, but instead of chicken and rice, it's ravioli, specifically Chef Boy RD ravioli. It honestly looks incredibly disgusting, and I uh, picked it just for that reason. I'm gonna be honest. It apparently has zero minutes of prep time. That can't possibly be true. So this has like green peppers in it, smoked ham slices, and, and the ham that it wanted me to get, it, it doesn't look good. But the worst part about it is it wants pineapple tidbits in juice. I guess technically it wants me to drain them. But yeah, is, is this like a Hawaiian pizza situation? I, I don't know. It's kind of B-tier pizza to me. But Hawaiian Chef Boyardee ravioli? I don't know, bro. I'm, I'm starting to regret this already. Technically, this recipe is supposed to be used with the mini beef ravioli, but as I mentioned a couple days ago, I accidentally used the mini one for the pita bread and you're supposed to use the big one. It's literally the same. The, the raviolis are just bigger or smaller, so I don't think it'll be a big deal. Let's go to the kitchen and get this over with. All right, so I've got all my ingredients. Washed my green pepper. Gonna chop this up. Gotta chop up some ham too, so we'll do that. The recipe seemed to call for a skillet, so hopefully this skillet is big enough. I'm using like a half portion of these recipes because they're meant for like more, at least two people, I think. And I'm even making some coffee because I have to get some other video work done after this. It's hot. I know I took another drink. <coughs> We have a little gift basket of different kinds of coffee that someone gave us. I decided to go with Italian dark roast to go with this authentic Italian meal. I was a little grossed out by this ham at first. I don't know why. Now that I'm using it, this actually seems pretty good. It's almost a shame that we're not going to put it on rice or something. We're going to pour Chef Boyardee ravioli into it and ruin it. Hey, who knows? Could be good. I can see why the mini ravioli would be better for this because the bigger ravioli has a tendency to break open while you're stirring it. Okay, so now we just add some mozzarella cheese on the top and let that melt a bit and it's done. Guys, I don't know if I'm going crazy or what, but this actually smells pretty good. And Azura got her can again and she even got some pieces of ham, so she likes this one as well. Are you up late with me? Good girl. Okay, so uh, again, I thought this was going to be bad. It may still wait, still very well be, but the more time I spent making it, the more I kind of want it to be good now. I'm actually really hungry. I need to plate this. I don't really know how. Uh, I feel like it's going to mess it up, but I'm, I'll do my best. Now, now I want it to be good. I want it to look good now. Okay, well, the plating did not go Oh well, I gave up on trying to make it look good almost instantly. But that doesn't mean it can't still taste good. Though I will say, looking at it now versus in the skillet on the stovetop, my confidence is a little shaken. But let's not mess around here. Let's just go into it. How do you even eat this? <laughs> We got, I got two pineapples on this bite. Get a little ham too. <laughs> Hawaiian pizza, lose the pizza, Ed Chef RD going down. What a strange experience. <laughs> what? Oh, Azura apparently wants to come in and she wants some. You can't have this, baby. I need another bite. Sorry, Toasty. I know you don't like cheese. Just saw a comment po pop up on my phone that said Toasty was the unsung hero of this channel. It's true. Let's make him the not unsung hero of the channel in the comments. Good job, Toasty. Sorry for the cheese. Okay, that bite was mostly just the ravioli, so it kind of tasted normal. I'm gonna go in. Oh my god, this cheese is excessive. I'm gonna go in and get another bite with everything. Ravioli, some ham, pineapple, green pepper. We got the works. Oh, okay, hold on. We almost have it. We Okay, we have it. That's so confusing. I will just say, it is not bad. It is not bad. It literally does just taste like, obviously, a Hawaiian pizza, but it, for some reason, the crust is sh 
noodles with beef in it. Supposedly beef. It's just the worst part of it, by far, I thought would be the pineapples. It's not really that. It's not that the weird looking ham. Honestly, that looked pretty good, especially once I started browning it. The worst part is just far and away the ravioli. It's, it's just like shitty ravioli. And somehow it makes it seem even more shitty when it's placed with other like halfway decent ingredients. It's funny because this ravioli is so bad that it makes canned processed pineapples and processed deli ham seem like high quality ingredients in comparison. Yeah, just a bite without the ravioli, it seems like, you know, a Hawaiian pizza lose the crust. I mean, the tomato sauce isn't amazing, but you know, it's fine. And the pineapple and the green pepper and the ham kind of add like a nice flavor to it. It's just the noodles are so sh Again, as I've mentioned a few times, I think that, you know, Chef YRD is largely made for kids, or at least it's very useful for kids who are kind of picky, might not want to eat other stuff. I'm trying to decide if a kid would like this recipe, if they like Chef YRD. I think maybe. And I mean, it has some green peppers in it, you know, that's kind of healthy, right? I guess. I've certainly eaten worse, less healthy meals when I was a kid, including but not limited to just Chef YRD without the green peppers. I don't think it would be like a hit favorite or anything, though. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm definitely eating it, though. I'm eating it. Thank you for the... the the fresh prepared meal, Mr. Chef boy. Yeah, again, last thing, I'll just emphasize how weird it is that the ravioli by itself and the other ingredients by itself taste way better than they do together. One thing I'm sure of, it's better than those freaking pita pockets. Speaking of which, the tier list, here we go. For S tier, I'm gonna go with a strong, hard nothing. Even grading on a Chef Boyardee curve, Nothing. A tier, I'll have the spaghetti sauce with the noodles. The stuffed beef ravioli, I don't know what people were smoking that on the reviews with that one. I thought it was good. And the cheese ravioli. B, I'll go with this Hawaiian recipe. Not too bad, honestly. It could have been a day. The spaghetti and meatballs, and then the beefaroni. C, I'll go with the mac and cheese, and this is the regular mac uh, ravioli. I never liked that shit that much. It's weird to me that it's the most popular one. And with D, not at, not at the on the left, all the way at the right, Tosi. The pita pocket ravioli. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you like these videos, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button. If if you can show us you want to see more and let us know what else you'd like to see me eat for one week whether that's fast food something you get at the grocery store anything see you guys next time bye, -bye.